This is the Content Marketing Podcast, episode number 106, Thoughts on Thought Leadership, an interview with thought leader architect, Mitchell Levy. Hello and welcome to the Content Marketing Podcast. This is the show where we help you attract and retain business through the power of quality content. I'm your host, Rachel Parker of Resonance Content Marketing, and today is January 22nd, 2015. Hello, hello, and thank you for joining us today for episode number 106 of the Content Marketing Podcast. We have got a terrific interview today that I cannot wait to share with you. Just a reminder, we are live on iTunes and on Stitcher, so if you're listening to this episode on the blog, you can click on over and subscribe. That means you'll get new episodes automatically delivered to your listening device of choice. And if you use a different app for your podcast listening pleasure, we also have an RSS feed, and I will provide that link in the blog post. This month is all about B2B content marketing, that's business to business, here at the Content Marketing Podcast. And last week, we shared five surprising facts about B2B content marketing from a recent research study. If you happen to miss that episode, feel free to click on over to iTunes or to Stitcher or to the RSS feed and get all caught up. Today, we're talking about thought leadership, and we have an interview with the world's very first thought leader architect, the one and only Mitchell Levy. But first, it's time to check in with our news feed for this week's rundown of news you can use. Well, it's been a long time in the making, but apparently Facebook is finally ready to unveil its Facebook at Work app. Now, you may have heard of this. It's been in the works for ages. Uh, Facebook is creating a spe- specific network for internal teams, so employees within a company or within a group within a company. And, it, you know, it's it's pretty much... It's pretty much Facebook's attempt to elbow in on the space that's currently occupied by brands like Basecamp and Asana. Um, so they want to, they're going to release Facebook at work. And the way it's going to work is the main account would have to be set up by the employer and the employees or, or the employer can set up separate accounts for employees or employees can, de- can decide to connect their personal accounts so they will have everything all in one place. But I think that part will be optional. Um, we will see how this goes. You know, I have my doubts. Um, I think the Facebook brand is still seen very much as a personal interaction site, you know, a place to keep up with friends and family, but not necessarily one you would think about um, connecting on, on a work level. So I'm not sure how employers are going to respond if they're going to pick it up when there are plenty of other tools out there, even free tools like Asana, for example, Um And these other free tools do not have Facebook's uh, bugaboos with privacy and security. So uh, I don't know. We'll keep an eye on it and see what happens. And the second item in our news feed is that, guess what? LinkedIn is creating its own um, connection and content sharing app for uh, teams of employees. So LinkedIn is getting in on this space, too. Um, This one is a little bit – there's not a whole lot of information on it. I don't have a name for the new product as of yet, but I can quote quote you what I read in a post on Mashable this week. Quote, LinkedIn is exploring a few ways to increase intra-office content sharing. The representative, the LinkedIn representative, told Mashable that these groups might be accessible in a mobile app, desktop product, and or some other way. LinkedIn expects to start a trial of this tool at the end of the quarter. The, the, presumably, they're talking about the first quarter. So, um, so we'll see. You know, I have to say, if it comes down to a face-off between Facebook and LinkedIn, um, my money's on LinkedIn. You know, they have the stronger brand in the in the business world um, and that that Facebook just doesn't have that doesn't enjoy that brand equity that they have. So uh, we'll see what happens. It will be interesting. 
Okay, for our content hit of the week, I have chosen a post called "Becoming a Visible Expert: Seven Traits Shared by Industry All Stars." This is a post by Lee W. Fredrickson on the Marketing Profs blog, and I love this post because number one, it ties in very well with today's interview on thought leadership with Mitchell Levy, but it's also、um, based on some very solid research. What Lee and his team did is they went out and they interviewed 130 what they call visible experts, and they identify these visible experts as. Industry stars who enable their 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 brands. So these are people who work within corporations. These are industry stars who enable their companies to attract more leads, command premium fees, and possess strong, recognized brands.、Um, And what Lee and his team discovered was that a lot of these people share the same attributes.、Uh, in fact, the data reveal that seven traits that all professionals must have to be a visible expert in their industry. So,、um, after you check out our interview with you with Mitchell Levy today, I, I strongly suggest that you check out this post. Once again, it's called "Becoming a Visible Expert: Seven Traits Shared by Industry All Stars," and I will share that link in the blog post for this episode. Okay, that's it for this week's update. Of course, if you stumble across something you think might be of interest to your fellow content marketers, please shoot it on over to us so that we can share. And I will provide that contact information at the end of the podcast. Now it's time for this week's spotlight segment: an interview with thought leader architect Mitchell Levy. Mitchell Levy is the CEO and thought leader architect at Think Aha, and chief Aha instigator at the Aha Amplifier, and we'll tell you more about that here in a bit. He and his team make it easy for corporations to easily create compelling content that help turn their experts into recognized thought leaders. Mitchell is an Amazon best-selling author with 35 business books. Wow! He is also a contributor at Entrepreneur Magazine. Has provided Strategic consulting to over 100 companies, has advised advised over 500 CEOs on critical business issues through the CEO networking groups he's run, and he has been chairman of the board of a Nasdaq listed company. What a resume! And he's also a heck of a nice guy, and we had a tremendous time chatting. So, without further ado, let's talk thought leadership with the thought leader architect himself, Mitchell Levy. Hey Mitchell, welcome to the podcast. Oh, absolutely amazing to be here! Thanks、oh, for having me. Thanks, happy to have you. So, Mitchell, I just read your your official bio, but would you mind giving us a little bit more of a personal introduction to who you are and what you do? Oh, of course.、Uh, you know, there's two parts of me.、Uh, there's a part of me which is the thought leader architect. And that is for the company, the consulting firm is called Think Aha.、Mm-hmm. And what Think Aha does is is we work with corporations to help turn their experts into recognized thought leaders. And we've got a whole series and plethora of stuff we do. So that's that's one piece of me. And what and what was born out of that is the second piece, and that is I'm also the CEO of a software company、um, called the Aha Amplifier.、Mm-hmm. And with the Aha Amplifier, it's it's a very interesting way to both create social media enabled eBooks and be able to take any content and repurpose it to a format that not only can you share content, but you can get your advocates to share the content as well. And、uh, and so I'm having fun with that. And、mm-hmm. then the question you would ask is, well, why are you doing both? And and it's a good question. And You know, it, I struggle with that for a little bit. I've always had the the the, the question of should I be the king or kingmaker or the queen、mm-hmm. or queenmaker?、Mm-hmm. Um, you know, it's when you look at somebody, should you do one and only one thing? And in the old world, we did, and we were told to do one and only one thing.、Yep. But in today's world, every CEO, every exec, sixty percent of the employee base should be thought leaders. Mm-hmm. And so, to me, the best thing I could do for the software company is to be a thought leader through Think Aha and take advantage of the tools and capabilities that my team actually delivers. And so, I'm, I, you know, it's like the Gillette commercial from way back when. I'm not only,、uh, I'm not only the CEO, I, I'm also a customer. <laughs> right, right. Wow, sounds like you are a very busy man. Uh, yeah, I try to keep busy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I, I think what's super amazing about today's world, Rachel. I mean, this is what's super amazing is 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 the world really is flat,、mm-hmm. and so 
you know, I've got people I work with in Europe, uh, in India, in the Philippines. Um, I love using tools like Odesk, um, Fiverr, Mm -hmm. um, where I can find resources and tie people together um, who can do things at a very reasonable price or absolutely significantly less than U.S.-based prices. And when you're paying that sort of price, you could run a lot more experiments. Mm. So the word I like to use often is lean thought leadership. And you throw mm-hmm. a couple things out there. You know, this is this is in the form of content marketing. You throw a couple things out there. You do A-B test. You see mm-hmm. what works. And then you keep moving forward. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Wow, fantastic. Now, now, Mitchell, I must admit, when I, when I came across your LinkedIn profile, it was the first time I ever heard of a thought leader architect. Can you tell us a little bit more about, about this job title and, and and what it entails? Um, yeah, of course. <laughs> uh, so before I uh, took this role, the last time I actually worked for a corporation was in 1997. Mm-hmm. I worked for Sun Microsystems. I was running the e-commerce component of Sun Supply Chain, which was three and a half billion. Mm-hmm. And and what I like to do, and we can come back to this, I like to catch waves. Mm-hmm. So I caught the e-commerce wave during the dot-com period. Um, I caught the wave of the democratization of book publishing hmm. starting in 2005. And so the firms that I uh, that I created, we've published over 400 books. Mm-hmm. And then what happened is the – over time, as things actually do democratize and many more people do it, it's just harder – the margins keep eroding. Mm-hmm. So in 2013, I decided to go back to my speaker consulting uh, roots. Um, and that's what I did during the dot com days. I was a, a management consultant, speaker consultant on uh, e commerce. And, mm-hmm. and do you remember Comdex when it was around? Mm-hmm. So that was the large. So I, I ran four conferences for Comdex. I created executive business programs for local Silicon Valley universities. And so I did a lot of interesting stuff. And then I became a book publisher. Um, and and just made life easy and have a number of different brands and and we we and I'm sure you know a lot of people who did multiple brands mm-hmm. and, and then in 2013 I go you know I'm, I I've got to really focus on thought leadership I've got to really make that happen so I, I I put my thought leadership hat back on and what what exists today or even back in 2013 that didn't exist you know during the the the, the turning of the uh, uh, of the dot com is is tools like LinkedIn. Mm-hmm. Because so I went to LinkedIn. I said, "Okay, what would make me unique? Here are the things what I think thought leadership is, and we'll spend more time in it. But thought leadership is more than just social media. It's mm-hmm. social media, traditional media, employee engagement, customer advocacy. So, mm-hmm. so what is what does a thought leader do, or how should I name myself? Mm-hmm. So I went to LinkedIn. I typed in the title social media." Because I wanted to see how many people – and I did a search from around the world. And at the time, there was like 113 or 114,000 people who had social media in their title. Mm -hmm. I go, okay, that's hard to stand out. Uh, (laughs) Many people do, but that's hard to stand out. And so then I typed in thought leader uh, or thought leadership. And it was interesting at the time – there were there were less than a thousand people with that in their title, mm-hmm. and, and I started thinking about what I did. You know, I I like big picture. I like I like the theoretical construct of how to go from A to B. You know, incorporating the change mat and all that. I mm-hmm. like figuring out taking a lot of existing assets and and sort of architecting a solution. And and then I, my team, what Thinkaha does is they're the execution arm. Mm-hmm. So I thought, well, kind of an architect kind of puts things together from a strategic perspective. And then you could either use the architect's firm for construction or you could get other people to, to support you. And so I, I've got lots of friends who we call into a number of different uh, companies, a number of different opportunities. Mm-hmm. And so I typed in thought leader architect. And the results that came back was there was nobody in the world mm-hmm. who was a thought leader architect. And I go, man, what a what a coolest thing in the world is if somebody's going to be a thought leader architect you know, or in terms of what I was doing, I had to come up with a name that I was the quote unquote first in the world. Mm. So, you know, by definition, I, I took a PDF snapshot of it so I could actually officially go back to it and show that I was the first thought leader architect. And and uh, so that's how the name came about is trying to demonstrate leadership. Mm-hmm. And and people get it right. People like the name thought leader architect. It, mm-hmm. it really does make sense. Um 
but it doesn't it's one of those things I, i've got a new name i like to call myself now um but it's i still use thought leader architect from the speaking consulting hat because it mm-hmm. really does uh it really does have a good it, it resonates what it is that i'm doing and it's helping companies figure out what is it they need to do mm-hmm. sure absolutely and um you know, Mitchell, when I think about thought leadership and trying to define thought leadership, it seems to me like like the parable of the three men trying to de- the three blind men trying to describe the elephant. Like one feels the tail and says, "Oh, this is a rope," and one feels the leg and says, "This is a tree," and one feels the trunk and says, "This is a snake." So it's it you know it's based on our own experience when we think about defining thought leadership. So so how do you, as the first uh, thought leader architect in the universe, how do you define thought leadership? Oh, universe, I have to use that. Nice job, Rachel. <laughs> totally. Um, <laughs> Cheers. You know, it, it, that was one of those questions that I kept getting all the time. And and as a marketer, I think by definition, we all have to be able to present things in simple two-by-twos. Mm-hmm. And and so if you actually went to the Think Aha website, um, so it's just thinkaha.com, I actually have a tab there that's that's about thought leadership. Mm-hmm. And and there are two there are two places you can la- lead on. One is the definition, uh, and the other is the thought leadership funnel. And I'm happy to to do a quick uh, a quick talk on each. But mm-hmm. so if I'm going to summarize the definition, mm-hmm. what I consider a thought leader, think of it as the go to person in the company in the organization. Mm-hmm. Um, the thought leader is a person who, if you have an issue, a problem, a question on any particular topic, who do you who do you go to? Mm-hmm. So, if you're living in a household and you have a bunch of kids, who's the thought leader on getting connected or doing things socially? Well, it's it's probably the teenage boy or teenage girl, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. Um, now, is that person the thought leader in their school? Well, it depends. If they're good at it and their school knows about it, then they're the thought leader. So the thing that's interesting about being the go-to person, it's the person you want to go to to get the ultimate answer for. Mm-hmm. So in the two-by-two, two, I've defined it as audience by content, mm-hmm. right? So if you end up having zero audience and uh, and by definition you have zero content, you're absolutely unknown, mm-hmm. right? And that's okay. Lots of people want to be unknown. If you happen to have a very small audience, but you happen to be an expert at what you do, you've got lots of interesting content. You not only know things about what you're doing, but you know what other people are doing to solve problems. Mm -hmm. I would call that an expert. Mm. Whereas if you have a large audience and, and, and lots of people know you, but your content's very narrow, you're focused on a particular company or a particular vertical, I'd call that the evangelist. Mm. Right. So the mm-hmm. thought leader is the person who has a large audience. Now, let's come back to that. It's a large audience for who they want to reach mm-hmm. and is expert at what they do. Mm-hmm. So let me give you an example. I, I've, got a, I've got a hosting company that I've got 100 different websites I'm using. And when I call my hosting company and or actually we don't actually call the hosting company anymore. We, we actually talk to them via chat online. Mm-hmm. So whoever is sitting on the other side of that. I expect them to be the thought leader. Mm-hmm. If they tell me the answer, I expect that answer to be – I want them to be my go-to person, right. right? So I have a problem doing something. I want to go to them and, and trust that whatever they tell me represents the best of what all their 20,000 other customers have done and what they think they can do. Mm-hmm. And so their audience, they only need to be a thought leader for the people whose phone they answer, Mm-hmm. Right. So it's a different form of thought leadership. I think on any salesperson, you know, any product, any service, um, if the salesperson is talking to a customer, they need to know the best practices, not just of their product, but of other complementary products or maybe even competitive products. And they can't be the old school was, oh, that company stinks. Uh, don't use them. The current school is, hey, we have some customers who have switched over there and here's why. And by the way, let me tell you why they came back, Mm. right? That's the thought leader. So the definition is a little broad Mm -hmm. because it's the go-to person in the space and the space is both defined vertically as well as geographically. Mm, Okay, interesting. So is that, so that's the definition and you also mentioned that there's a thought leadership funnel as as a companion to that. Tell us a little bit about that. So the the thought leadership funnel represents, and once again, if you go to thinkaha.com or if you just, 
this is another one of those things that I have uh, uh, Google juice on. If you just type in thought leadership funnel in Google, mm -hmm. uh, I'll come up in a ton of different places. Mm -hmm. um, and what we're looking at there is a transformation. And for content marketers, this is absolutely something that's super important. It's a transformation of how you look at the old sales funnel. Mm. Right. So in a sales funnel, the 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 obvious thought process was there's this large funnel at the top and your job is to throw as many people into the funnel as possible. Mm -hmm. And, you know, hey, it'd be great if all those were really customers. But given that we didn't know they were customers, we would call them suspects <laughs> or prospects or, you know, potentially we'll make money from these guys. Mm -hmm. And that's what we call them. And then the goal is throughout the funnel as you're navigating down with different tool sets, the goal is to figure out how do you get them down the funnel with the minimal amount of cost with the most amount of uh, leverage and, and output. Mm -hmm. Well, I think in the old days, if you think about a website, people would come to a website. And they, now, the old days, let's say 10 years ago, 15 years ago, mm -hmm. those that were building websites assumed that people came to the website from the front door. They came from the home page. Mm -hmm. But with, with Google and other search engines, we realized right away that if you were doing SEO optimized pages on particular topics, people would, or blog sites or anything else, people would come into a website at any particular location. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, why isn't this true on the sales photo as well? You don't always stop. At, you don't always come at, at the top. Mm. As a matter of fact, with today's tools, what's really interesting is if I was using a SaaS based product and needed to solve a problem. Mm -hmm. Whether it's something as simple as a to-do list or a calendar or uh, a C, you know, a favorite uh, lean, lean focused CRM, what do I do? I go to a couple of my friends who are successful and I say, "Hey, who do you use?" Mm -hmm. And they say, "Hey, I love this," and they got a thirty-day trial. Try it. Mm -hmm. Well. I have to be honest with you, I may not even know who the company is when they say that, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. I may know that my friend said go, and because it's free, I my, the cost of signing up is probably my email address. Because mm -hmm. it's free, I'm going to sign up and I'm going to try it. Mm -hmm. Well, at that stage, me as a – and by the way, I don't like to call it suspect or prospect. I mm -hmm. like to call it future advocate. Ah, oh, I like that. So me as a future advocate – the, the goal of the company is to make sure that I'm not left alone. Mm -hmm. I signed up. I've got 30. They have 30 days where I'm potentially interested in knowing who they are and helping me be successful. And by the way, I'd say 99% of the companies still don't do this well. Mm -hmm. right? So let's, let's, let's walk through the Thought Leadership Funnel. We'll come back to that example. So at the top of the funnel is awareness. Mm -hmm. The next level down is engagement, not very, not very dissimilar to what we, uh, to what exists today in the sales funnel. What I call the next level of the funnel is, and and when I look at the funnel, I still think it gets narrow between awareness and engagement. But I look at look at the next level of funnel as a future advocate. Mm -hmm. And what I'd also say is that future advocate, just like me, I wasn't aware of the company, I wasn't engaged in the company, but some other. Advocate, which is the last stage of the funnel, told me I needed to actually use this product or use this service. And so I am somebody who came into this company right in the middle of the funnel. I came in as a future advocate. I, I downloaded a piece of software or an app, and now I have to use it. Mm -hmm. And it's the company's job. It's the content marketer's job to understand where I sit in the evolution of using the, the product. So wouldn't the coolest first thing be a, a one-minute video? Hey, thanks for signing up. Here's how somebody who's just like you used this product. Hmm. Wouldn't it be great if after a week, hey, we saw that you haven't used it yet. You know, based on your network, and by the way, you have access to everyone's network. Based on your network, I think you should do X, whatever X is. Mm -hmm. And by the way, here's a couple places you can go to get videos to learn more, mm -hmm. right? Um, after week, you know, after week two, you know, you still haven't used it. You know, our guys, we have thought leaders who are amazing at this in your space. Can I set up a phone call for you? Mm -hmm. Now, I understand if you're if the if the product is nineteen ninety five a month or te, you know, nine ninety five a month, that's not possible. Mm -hmm. So you you flip that around with something that is more economically makes sense. But if something if it turns out that I happen to represent one person of a thousand person organization or a ten thousand person organization, mm -hmm. it's important for 
the the thought leadership funnel to do things for the organization to do things that will turn me into an advocate. Hmm. Right? Because once I'm an advocate, what's going to happen? I'm going to recommend it. And Hmm. the other thing, I'll give you the one last thing. At the bottom of the funnel, typically the sales funnel at the bottom typically has the word customer. Mm Mm-hmm. But what I tell you is it shouldn't have the word customer. It should have the word advocate. Yeah. And this now goes back to thought leadership. Not only do you want your customers to be advocates, but you want 100% of your employee base to be advocates. You want influential people in the marketplace to be advocates, right? And so that represents a series of, of marketing programs to turn your employees, to turn your customers, to turn the influencers in the marketplace – into advocates as well. And so that's kind of the thought leadership funnel. We should be thinking about the fact that a a future advocate can come in the door anyway, at any particular location. If you're an organization with 10,000 employees, you have 10,000 people who could be saying good things about you. Mm-hmm. And, and what happens today, there's probably at least 50 or 60% of those, five to 6,000 who are potentially saying bad things about you because mm-hmm. that's what the stats say. Mm-hmm. Well, you got to fix that, right? So anyhow, that's that's kind of the uh, thought leadership funnel. Yeah. Wow, that's interesting. And and you know, you just answered my my next question, which is, do you need to be CEO to be a thought leader? And it sounds like the answer is no. Well, you know, my definition is let's go back to the two by two mm-hmm. audience by content, right? To to be a thought leader that moves the needle, that changes the world. You know, you need to be in a position where your audience that you define is going to be big enough, Mm -hmm. right? But if we go back to the silly example of the thought leader of the household, Mm -hmm. right? If you happen to know that one of your three kids is the best at this and they're the thought leader, you're going to go to them. By definition, you you bestow the the, the title thought leader to them. Mm -hmm. You know, inside a organization, inside the customer – the customer service area of an organization, there are people who are more knowledgeable in some areas than others. Yeah. And you ever have people, you know, sort of do second level or, you know, second level support. They're going to their thought leader. What they're a thought leader of and the knowledge they have is going to be slightly different, actually significantly different than what the CEO's thought leadership position is mm-hmm. or what the CMO or anyone in the C-suite or anyone who's considered a a brand evangelist, mm-hmm. their definition and their influence in the world is going to be different. But it doesn't mean that on the, on, on the lines, the people who are touching your customers and your, your future advocates on a day-to-day basis, they need to be powered to be thought leaders in what they're, what they're supposed to be doing. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Interesting. So what does this say about, uh, let's say, organizations who, who have shut off their employees from social media? <laughs> so uh, in the long term, those companies disappear, mm-hmm. right? It's just it, it, if if the premise of the – now, let, I, I say that half-handedly, right? Mm-hmm. The, there are industries which are regulated. You know, the farmer industry, um, some financial services industry. There are things which employees are allowed to talk about and not allowed to talk about. And mm-hmm. you've got to – and there's – by the way, there is software today that can easily monitor before items go out or after mm-hmm. items go out to mm-hmm. keep track. And depending on whether or not you're in a regulated industry or not, if you're not in a regulated industry – God, I wouldn't monitor content that goes out from your employees. Mm-hmm. Um, I would, I would certainly monitor and watch and and make sure I'm listening to not only what my employees are saying, but what what anyone who's touching my organization in any way. I've got to understand what they're doing. Mm-hmm. But the thing that's interesting is you got an organization with ten thousand employees. Those are 10,000 potential microphones mm. who, are, who, are, who are yelling positive things about you and, and who your company is, right? And, and I think if for those companies that are creating a work environment where their employees can't talk about good things, it's for a reason. Mm-hmm. It's because the employees are not happy. Mm-hmm. Well, if the employees are not happy it, or maybe they're not knowledgeable, maybe they don't know what they're – passionate about. Maybe they don't really understand what the company is really doing. I mean, I say that half-heartedly, but 
there are many organizations where you go to different levels of the organization and, say, and you say, so at the end of the day, what do you do to help your customers be successful? And how many employees actually give the, the quote-unquote right answer to that? Mm. Right, and so the the goals, the missions, the approach that that we actually run companies with today, all come out of an industrial age society with time and motion studies, and and we and a person has a job, and that's the only thing they do, mm-hmm. and and we've got to you know almost stand over them with a whip and make sure they do it better, and you know that's not the way it works in today's world, or that's not the way it's going to work in today's world, mm-hmm. and if you look at any this is one of those things, Rachel, that's always fun to say. You know, when you and I were growing up, you know, we were in a generation where we'd say, hey, life is going to change. Mm-hmm. And, and, you know, and, and maybe it did a little bit. And, and we definitely had some mega trends that changed things a little bit. Mm-hmm. But it's not as true as today's younger generation, mm-hmm. the the Generation Z, the, the, the folks which are, you know, the 16 to, to 20 year olds who can – literally have at their fingertips the opportunities to do amazing things yeah. and and the questions they ask when they go into a company is why do you do it that way mm-hmm. and the answer being well we've always done that way or we've done time and motion studies and we know this works those answers aren't going to work anymore because mm-hmm. what will happen is they'll start their own company and they'll they'll eat you know i, I the, the old example of Netflix and, you know, Blockbuster is a great one. But mm-hmm. every single day I run across companies um, that are doing things that are just significantly better and different than what exists today. And uh, what powers a lot of that is the technology and the infrastructure are now available to touch, you know, a large percentage of people in the world. Mm-hmm. And to do it on an economic level. So now the question is, what is it that they really need? What is it that the customer really needs? And what is the best way to solve that customer um, and, and to solve the problem that's going to be happening? And once again, if you're telling your employees they can't touch the internet, so maybe they don't like their job, they don't like what mm-hmm. they're doing, mm-hmm. well, what do they do when they come home? Mm-hmm. They sit around the dinner table and they bitch and moan about it. Mm-hmm. Okay, well, what do they do? When they come home, well, it's no longer about the dinner table. It's mm-hmm. social media. So when they're home, they're going to go online and they're going <laughs> to bitch and moan about your company, right? Yeah. And, and whether or not they do it through Glassdoor where it's private or they do it public with, you know, in private forums, you don't want your employees moaning about you. You want them saying good things. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yep, absolutely. So, so getting back to um, – kind of the concept of, of thought leadership. You know, we kind of talked about what a thought leader looks like from the outside, but from the inside, how can how can we tell, how can we as individuals, as individual content marketers, how can we tell if we ourselves are thought leaders? And is it an all or nothing thing or are there degrees of thought leadership? <laughs> so, you know, it, it's a great it's actually a great question that that's has a multi-tiered answer. Yay. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I love multi-tiered answers. You know, well, one, one component of that is going back to the definition of thought leadership, mm-hmm. right? So if you're a content marketer, uh, first I'd step back and say, well, what is it that you're marketing, right? What is the content that you're focused on? And who is the audience that you want to reach? And then the next question is, how how good of a job, how well-versed are you at understanding what the problem is that you're trying to solve or what is the issue that you're trying to address, right? So you go to the audience by content two by two and you try to figure out, A, where do you want to sit? Now, if you say – if every content marketer for every company says, hey, I, I'm going to be the one and only, well, that's not possible, mm-hmm. Right, so if you if you narrow it down, the the smaller you you define the geography, or the smaller you define the vertical, the easier it is to be the and, and we'll go back to the term I used, the go to recognized expert in that space. Mm-hmm. Now, here's something that content marketers there's there's absolutely so we'll talk about old days versus new days. Mm-hmm. Uh, in the no, in the in the old days, to be a thought leader. You know, the way life worked is is we had these publishing firms and they, they'd pick a Ken Blanchard and they'd say, hey, Ken, you're the man. Uh, write this book. 
we're going to do the one minute manager and and then they market it throughout the world and lots of people know the brand Ken Blanchard right and, and that and that was a that was a way in the past in which people became thought leaders is is they they'd get on radio or they'd get on TV or they'd have a book that was published or they become and ultimately that would lead to a big lucrative speaking career well now and now in today's world everyone has content everyone has the megaphone mm-hmm. so one of the things i like to say there are two things here one I think the new attention span is seven seconds. Mm-hmm. If you don't capture somebody's attention in seven seconds, they're going away. Well, if you think about it, that's as much time as it takes to read a good tweet. Yep. All right. So every so the attention span is now a tweet. Now, can you possibly? Could anyone possibly sit around all day and come up with? Enough tweets to keep to get their audience super excited. Now, it doesn't mean you can't have more. Once you capture somebody's attention, then you want to send them to something that's more meaty, more bulky, mm-hmm. whether it's a slideshare. Slideshare is a great, by the way, marketing tool for thought leaders. Mm-hmm. Uh, whether it's a YouTube or YouTube channel, whether it's a blog channel, blog post, whether it's your LinkedIn, Facebook, Twitter, or Google+, Instagram, whatever your channels are that you're using, you know, once you capture their attention, you want them to grab more. Mm-hmm. But – one of the things in the old days was it was super important that the thought leader was the primary voice to make sure things weren't diluted. It was this is the way the thought leader thought. Mm-hmm. Okay. Let's go back to my my thought on, on the word go-to expert. When I'm talking to a salesperson and I say, here's my problem, and, and I say, tell me the best answer. If they do not know who their competitors are and how their competitors would work with me versus how they're going to work with me, I do not trust that salesperson and I'm going to leave and go away. Mm -hmm. I may go back to the company one more time, but if two salespeople actually said to me, this is the only and only way and this is the only and only solution, I probably would never use that product. Mm -hmm. I probably would never use that service. So. To be a thought leader, so let's go back to the the, the you know the, the seven second attention span. Let's give you another thought. Eighty percent of the content you share as a thought leader should be somebody else's, hmm. right? Because mm-hmm. what happens is if you're sharing other people's content, you are actually and, and of course not stealing other people's content, sure. sharing other people's content. If you're sharing other people's content, you're putting yourself out there as the go-to expert, as a, as a recognized person who, hey, not only do I produce good content myself, but rather I know who my peers are. Mm-hmm. And because I know who my peers are, they produce good things. I'm going to share what they do as well. Mm-hmm. And there's a number of things that come out of that. Not only do, do, does it help build good relationship with your peers, uh, there may be opportunities where your peers want – when they're doing the same thing, they're going to share your content. Uh, when they're producing new areas, you know, whether or not it's speakers at conferences or new podcasts or, uh, in your case, or new Google Hangouts or things that they're doing. Or one of my favorite thought leadership tools these days is the top 10 list mm-hmm. you know, or top 25 or top 50 list where you're grabbing the best of. Mm-hmm. Well, you want to be included in that or be asked to contribute to those things. And so if you're putting out, if you're giving, um, I, you know, I, I, I love Kari Anderson's book, Mutuality Matters. If you're actually giving to other people, they're going to give back. Mm-hmm. And so one way to give is is if you got a platform, you might as well share other people's content because it gives you more credibility. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so if I'm if I'm looking at at what I'm doing in effort to build thought leadership, and I'm I'm just looking, and it's just not, I'm just not getting traction. You know, I'm putting good content out there. I'm sharing other people's content, and if I'm just not, I'm not. It's not sticky, and I'm not getting traction. What are some What are some steps that I can take to alleviate that? So I'm going to say something. I'll give you an answer, but I'm going to do a a teeny, teeny – not necessarily a plug because it's available for free. Um, But as soon as uh, 2013 started coming around, I I wrote a book called Creating Thought Leaders. Mm -hmm. And uh, you can pick up the book in in physical form on Amazon in a number of locations. Uh, but you could also pick it up for free if you went to MitchellLevy.com. Uh, we've got the ebook available for free. But even better 
if you went to the AHA amplifier, so it's ahaamplifier.com, mm-hmm. and you sign up, there is – that book itself is comprised of 140 twitter size quotes. Mm. And at the AHA amplifier, you can unlock it for free and then start sharing it. And, and what's really interesting, it will start as you're sharing. So let's say you share a quote that says, hey, 80% of the content you share should be somebody else's. Mm-hmm. And what's going to happen when you share that? Well, what you have to do is listen to how your audience responds, right? Who responds and why? Who forwards it? Who retweets mm-hmm. it? Um, who's actually making comments on it if you're doing it on Facebook or Google Plus or LinkedIn, right? So, so the interesting part is – when you start sharing content, some of it should be uh, potentially controversial to you and the folks you work with. Mm-hmm. What are their responses? How do they how do they how do they relate to that content? So to to answer your question, if you're if you're doing stuff and you're just in the noise mm-hmm. and it's not working for you, well, maybe it means you haven't defined a narrow enough audience to go after, or a narrow enough topic, or a narrow enough vertical. Mm-hmm. Right. So step back and figure out where you can put yourself as, or if you're a content marketer, if you start looking inside your organization, there are a tremendous number of people who are experts. Mm -hmm. Well, your job could be to go to that expertise and help make them recognized experts, i.e. go to people in the space they're playing. And you want to make sure you define a narrow enough window so that it's relatively easy for you to to address that. Mm-hmm. And, and we all know that – I mean I'm, I'm happy to spend time doing that, but we all know the content marketing ways to, to go about. You know, you find other experts in your mm-hmm. space. You make friends with those experts. You start sharing their content so that when you start sharing your content, they start sharing it as well so that you not only have your audience, you reach, you reach somebody else's audience. Mm-hmm. Um, what I do with the AHA Amplifier for me when I'm doing my thought leadership – um, part of what I do as the AHA amplifier, there's there's over 18,000 curated quotes in the system. Mm-hmm. And so what I do is is uh, I'll wake up in the morning when I have time, and, and this uh, unfortunately isn't always every day, so sometimes it's sometimes during the day, where I'll actually go and share content from other books in the system. And so when I share stuff with from Kari Anderson or Ted Rubin or Joe Raleigh or, or a host of other uh, well-known folks. In this, I love sharing Scott Abel stuff, right, content mm-hmm. marketer, uh, wrangler. So when I start sharing other people's content, what happens is the author typically shares it. Uh, my audience will come back and say whether or not they like it or not. And then when, when let's say, a Scott Abel retweets content I share, his audience may interact with it. Mm-hmm. So – Part of being a good content marketer, part of being a good thought leader is not only do you share stuff, which is yours and others, but you're actually listening to who who comments and why. Mm -hmm. And so when they comment, you know, when they share, well, how hard is it to hit the like button? How much time Mm -hmm. does that take? Mm -hmm. If they say something controversial, how hard is it for you to either respond as appropriate or get a good response? Right. Or even if they even if it's something you don't like, you like it because they took interest in responding. Mm -hmm. Right. So it's the old days of just sort of taking content and throwing it out there and hoping it works. Mm -hmm. uh, Those days don't really exist anymore. Right. Uh, People want real live humans who not only are saying stuff, but will talk about it and feel comfortable about it and can interact and 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 to be reachable. Mm -hmm. Um. A good example, uh, Jeffrey Hazlett, we had him on a show I do called Thought Leader Life. And then we, we – what's, what's interesting about Jeff is, is he's, got a, he, he's got now his second TV show that, that he's doing. Uh, mm-hmm. First one's on Bloomberg and it's, it's remarkably successful. But when you reach out to Jeffrey Hazlett on social media, mm-hmm. he will respond. Hmm. Right? It's not one of his people respond. He will respond because mm-hmm. he understands the importance of being able to talk to his audience. Mm-hmm. Right now, if you ask something silly, you know he may res- he may respond with an answer you never get a good response on. But if you start sharing Jeffrey Hazlett's content, and if you go to thoughtleaderlife.com, you could see his video. You could you could watch it, read it, share it. He will respond directly to you mm-hmm. um, because he recognizes the importance of being a person who's approachable. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's interesting. And, and you know what I was thinking about, Mitchell, while, while you are giving that answer just now, is that do you think that as the content sphere, as 
um, as it grows, as more and more people are getting on this content marketing bandwagon, and we do have more of those Me Too, quote, content creators who are just cranking stuff out, do you think it's even more important to elevate it to the level of conversation rather than just cranking things out? Because that's that's just not going to get you traction. Yeah, should I hit the ding, ding, ding button? Um, <laughs> so, yeah, when you when you now go back and think about the thought leadership funnel, Mm-hmm. One component of the funnel, the second component is, you know, first component is awareness, the second one is engagement. Mm-hmm. So that's the engagement part, yeah. right? How are you going to engage? Now, so, so here's interesting, right? So if you actually happen to bump into somebody and, 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 they, and they work for themselves and, and you don't know who they are, and, and so do you, do you engage with them? Well, you at least give them the time of day. You at least help them out. Now, what happens if that person – unbeknownst to you, happens to be a significant influencer in the space. Mm -hmm. Now, by the way, if you're a content marketer, you should know who your influencers are. But if you haven't used the right listening tools to watch who's doing what and where, they could be very significant. Or if you do a much more narrower focus focus of what a thought leadership is, Mm -hmm. uh, I'm sorry, what a thought leader is in a particular space, being both a vertical and geographic space as well as the content that's focused on, Mm -hmm. um, there may be people who are influencers who will never be customers of yours, Mm -hmm. but you still want to engage them, Mm -hmm. right? And so that's the thing. You just never know who the the person is that you should touch and engage with that Mm -hmm. will all of a sudden say something amazing or write, you know, write something somewhere or publicly say something, you know? And so it, it comes down to a world in which, um, I like to say where, where you know, if you think about Mark Babbitt and De- and Ted Cornet's book, A World Gone Social, it comes back to the fact that we now are living in a social world. Mm-hmm. You know, in the old days, the social world was we had a village. Mm-hmm. You know, in the village, everyone knew everyone, and if there happened to be two bakers in the village, who did you visit? Well, you might visit the 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 baker that's closer to you, mm-hmm. or you might visit the baker that's more friendly. To you, mm-hmm. you know, in the general store, you know, how did the how did the person in the general store know what to order? Well, he knew all the people who were getting married and when they were expecting kids and what stuff to actually hold. Right? Mm-hmm. That's a very social economy. Mm-hmm. Um, we're actually moving back to a social economy where, within smaller groups, smaller constructs, we now know a lot more about people because the footprint is socially and digitally available. And so are we doing the right things to touch, engage, interact, and serve the digital communities that that are now popping up? Mm-hmm. And that's what we need to focus on. Mm-hmm. Yep, absolutely. Um, you know, Mitchell, one thing that, that really intrigues me about your approach to thought leadership is that how you emphasize the connection between thought leadership and ROI. And ROI is a four-letter word in a lot of, a lot of content-based communities. So how do, you, how do you address that? How do you talk about that connection? How do you establish that link between thought leadership and ROI for your clients? So it, it, it's a great – this is another one of those super great questions that have also a myriad of responses. Mm-hmm. There's there's an easy answer, right? One easy answer is if you're tracking what you're doing with social media and leads in the door and touching people, what did we hear? I mean it, it, there, I've heard numbers between you have to touch somebody nine times to 28 times before they actually become a customer. Mm-hmm. So if you think about thought leadership and, and, and social media and content marketing as one or maybe multiple times of many, so you've got to touch people a number of times before they actually come in the door. Mm-hmm. Now, if you take a look at a lot of the, the sales tools that are out there, the social selling tools, they could actually keep track of where people came in the door. And so if you're actually tracking with an actual ROI-based tool of where people are touched, where they come in the door, you can actually put an actual dollar amount on how much benefit, how much success – you know, a you know, because we have a LinkedIn program, this is how much money we got from from LinkedIn, Twitter, Facebook, right? You can start tracking that. Mm-hmm. Uh, and some of those tools are better than others and and so on. The the real so that's that's the that's the answer that you, you sit when you're looking and talking to a CFO is hey, let's track it, let's analyze it, let's mm-hmm. make sure we we make sure it happens. Uh, the answer that comes to anyone who's a futurist or anyone who's thinking about a couple years down the road, the word thought leader won't exist. 
right? There's no reason for that word to exist because everyone will be a thought leader in the space that they define, hmm. right? It's just going to be some of those things that are natural. I mean, you know, when we think of in the past, you needed a you needed a fax machine to do business, right? Before there were fax machines, you know, it, there was there were a lot of people saying, "Oh, I don't know if I want to adopt one." Uh, the same thing happened with websites. I don't know if I really want to. Ad- adopt a website. Same thing happened with, oh, I don't know if the company should be on social media. Mm -hmm. But at some point in time, anyone you interact with, you want them to be the thought leader of the space that you're talking to them about. Mm -hmm. Rachel, if you think about the world, and this doesn't exist today, but I I love this as a vision. Think about the fact that I may have Google Glass on, Uh and you reach out to me today, and I'm seeing your Yelp score. Now, I'm using Yelp as a verb, not as a, not as, not as a noun. Mm-hmm. And so I'm thinking about and getting a number in my mind of how you interacted with everyone who was just like me. Mm-hmm. Right? Well, that's, that's kind of interesting. So, so imagine now you're a salesperson for a company. I get your Yelp score. And that is, have you commit? Have you actually followed through on your commitments? What have you done in the past? People who are like me, how did they do when they interacted with you? And not only should I see the Yelp score for you in in as as a salesperson in this company, I want to see the Yelp score for the company overall, hmm. right? So I want to see overall what how has the company dealt with people just like me? Hmm. Well, I, you know, I don't know if we're four to five years away from something as as very uh, understandable as that in a way that really makes sense. Mm-hmm. Uh, but you could see, now that I said it, you can see it's going to happen. Yeah. Right? So everyone I talk to from the company has to be an advocate. They have to be engaged because they help contribute to the overall Yelp score of the company overall. Right? And, and if the company has people who don't care about their customers, they really shouldn't be at the company anymore. Mm. Right? And so what happens is that word thought leadership won't exist because everyone is a – I mean you don't have to use the thought leader anymore. It's just sort of – you know, if you go to the shoe store and, you, and you're trying on shoes, you want the person who's helping you to be an expert. You want mm-hmm. them to be the thought leader of fitting me into the right shoe, mm-hmm. right? And you want them to say, hey, you know what? This brand, I, 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 I'd love to have you as a customer, but you know, it goes back to Miracle on 34th Street. This mm-hmm. brand is not going to work for me, but if you went to the other guys down the other side of the mall, they've got a fit based on the way your your foot works mm-hmm. that would work better for this application mm. this application maybe being runny or running or a social or you know and yeah. the thing is we we want to be able to for all intents and purposes we want to be able to make friends with the people who interact with us mm-hmm. in such a way that we trust what they're saying and, and so that's my that's my bigger picture uh, vision on thought leadership and it 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 means that the way we interact this is where small companies are much bigger than large companies. The way we interact with customers has to change because we, we need to deliver and everyone in the organization needs to deliver what it is the customer not only asks for, but what they really need. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so, Mitchell, uh, we're, we've covered a lot of great territory here. I want to get uh, talk specifically about the app, the AHA Amplifier. How did you come up with it? Um, what it, and how is it from from day to day? How do how do you want people to to be using it, and how is it going to enhance their journey towards becoming thought leaders? Mm. Oh, thank you. Um, so it, it, it's just simply ahaamplifier.com. It is free to use, although we will be putting a subscription model in place at some point in time. Um, and imagine having the opportunity to reach out to thought leaders in your space to be able to have a, a 5, 10, 15-minute interview with them mm-hmm. and be able to write down what they say and without asking them, be able to share what they say on social media. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's what the AHA amplifier is, oh, perfect. right? So we've got a tremendous number of uh, thought leaders that are already there, and they grow every day. So one way to look at it is you go to the AHA amplifier, and you could look for topics and content of things you want to share, mm-hmm. and then you can share them. Um, and basically, the sharing is at a click of a button on mm-hmm. Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn, or Google+. Mm-hmm. So that's so as a thought leader, if 80% of the content you share should be somebody else's, well, you might as well have access to 18,000 quotes and that mm-hmm. grows daily that you can share, right? Mm-hmm. So that's that's one way to use it. Mm-hmm. Um, another way to use it, and this is super important for content marketers, is any content that you've created in the past, you could absolutely repurpose mm-hmm. 
into an AHA amplifier book. Mm. Because if you're thinking about a, a, a tweet, you know, remember that seven second attention span. If you're thinking about a tweet and you want to create and repurpose content as a tweet, and it, it just doesn't fit, right? It I want to say something relevant, but I want them to read more. Mm-hmm. Well, why don't you include a bitly? You, so you could have a bitly with any one of these aha quotes that point you mm-hmm. back to either you know to a to a to a slide share or YouTube or to your blog, mm-hmm. right? Where mm-hmm. you, if you want to get more information, right? The interesting part as well is if you have a bunch of influencers or uh-huh. let's say you have a lot of go-to experts at your company, well, ask them a question, mm-hmm. right? It, uh, you know, we've got Valentine's Day coming up. So mm-hmm. how cool would it be for for Zappos or for a company to say, hey, how do you treat your spouse on Valentine's Day? Mm-hmm. You know, you end up with a couple hundred responses that come back. You you, mm-hmm. you condense it down to 140 and now you have an aha book. Mm-hmm. Right, so the the ability to actually now create a social media enabled ebook is super easy. And if you, mm-hmm. when you go to the Aha uh, Amplifier, uh, there's a button that says "Become an Author," and we have a seven step process of how to easily become an author. Mm-hmm. Now, how do you become successful once you become an author? Mm-hmm. So this is where it gets interesting, right? And and that is you want to encourage. Your advocates who like you, by definition, they're an advocate. Mm-hmm. You want to encourage your advocates to say good things about you. Yep. So if you're a corporation and you have 10,000 employees, why not create an AHA book a month, a week, a mm-hmm. day, your call, and, and be able to say to your employees, by the way, these are all approved messages that I wouldn't mind if you wanted to share with the world. Mm-hmm. And by the way, if you now listen, if you're that organization and you start listening to who's sharing – um, and we've got some reports that were that, that are available today that we're also working on. We have some reports that will actually say, hey, here are the employees who are great ambassadors who are sharing this. And by the way, they shared this content and this ultimately resulted in mm. these future advocates coming to us. Mm-hmm. I that going back to your ROI question. Mm-hmm. So you could actually now create content and repurpose existing content. If you're a mm-hmm. content marketer today, you probably have a hundred or a thousand aha books almost at your fingertips. Mm-hmm. Right? Wow. That you could actually create from scratch. Uh-huh. Right? Because it's 140 quotes. And if today's attention span is says seven seconds, your job is to figure out how to share those seven seconds. Mm-hmm. Uh, we've been talking by the time we're done, we'll talk for an hour. Mm-hmm. This conversation be can be converted into 80 aha quotes. Wow. Right? So typically every half hour is about 40 or so quotes. And mm-hmm. so you know, with Thought Leader Life, one of the things we do is we we actually have a – we interview folks as a Google Hangout. We share it on Google Hangout as well as SlideShare. So it's on YouTube, SlideShare. We take the audio and put it into a podcast. Uh, we do a blog post. But for every half hour interview, we have – 40 quotes. If you go to the thoughtleaderlife.com website, you could actually see that we'll, out of last year with 54 episodes, we will, when we're done, have created 13 new aha books. So we've got some phenomenal people, 54 people we talked to. We have 13 aha books of 140 quotes each that are easily shared. Well, that's something that's easily replicable at any uh, sure. at any organization and, and content marketers should be thinking about doing that today. And, and so, so to answer your question, uh, you could share good, compelling other people's content today. Mm-hmm. Um, it's easy for you to, to write content. Either you write it yourself from existing mm-hmm. content that exists or you crowdsource it from your customers, your employees, your influencers. Mm-hmm. And, and then it's easy for you to then that would, maybe this is not as easy. This is the part where, your job is to help encourage your advocates to be able to share that content as well. Mm-hmm. Wow, amazing! And and what has the response been to this to this app? Oh uh, well, so we're still newer mm-hmm. uh, than uh, what I'm finding in the feedback we get from most uh, most of the people who are using it on a day to day basis is they're picking up more followers than they ever expected, mm. right? Because they're now sharing. Maybe in some cases, and I don't want to name names, they may be sharing other people's content for the first time, mm-hmm. and they're getting good resonance. Mm-hmm. Uh, and uh, the 
we've got uh, what, one of my favorite uh, folks that are using it is a is a firm by the name of Weaving Influencer. Mm-hmm. I'm sorry, Weaving Influence. Mm-hmm. And what Weaving Influence does is they do marketing for books. So every time a new book comes out, they can hire the author can hire Weaving Influence, and I think they've they've marketed 44 books so far. Mm-hmm. Well, every new book that gets created the Weaving Influence team creates an AHA, a social media enabled AHA book Mm -hmm. because it's just a great Mm complement to the type of marketing stuff they're doing. Uh, We've got firms that every time they do a research report, they create an AHA book. So Mm -hmm. it's, think of it as an opportunity to have a way to amplify the messages Mm -hmm. um, that you're doing. And so we've, the other thing that's interesting, we've had uh, a couple of our authors, Ted Rube and Jill Raleigh, took their AHA books and made them into physical books Mm -hmm. so that when they're speaking at events, they now have this tchotchke item, which Mm -hmm. happens to be 140 really cool quotes that they've said Mm -hmm. or or written. They have this tchotchke item of a physical book that they hand out. So when they do keynotes, um, they'll they'll have the folks, the companies that are having them keynote actually print physical copies to have everyone in in, in attendance. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's just an absolute beautiful way from a content marketer perspective to turn content into a platform that's easily shared. Mm -hmm. And then if you create it into a physical book, uh, it's also something that's uh, much more memorable. Wow. That is fantastic. Well, Mitchell, I know uh, you are already a busy man and we are only just in January. So uh, what does the rest of 2015 look like for you and the Think Aha team? You know, I, 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 I think the, for Think Aha, we will continue to do what we do. We've, mm-hmm. we've as a physical, I, I haven't gotten rid of the publisher. So as a publisher, we've published over 400 titles. Mm-hmm. So we will still publish books. We will still help folks with social media. We'll still do strategic work helping uh, people from an architectural perspective understand what's going on. So I think that's a – from the speaker consultant perspective, it's just more speeches, more uh, – more engagement. So that'll continue. Mm -hmm. From the AHA amplifier perspective, I'm right in the midst of doing some great partnerships. Mm -hmm. So I think from a marketing perspective, it's how can I bundle this into what other people are doing? It doesn't have to be 100% a standalone destination in Mm -hmm. many cases. Mm -hmm. And so it's it's a continued growth of of ahas, continued growth of user base, and continued growth of corporations that just use it, uh, use it directly, and and also software companies that just bundled into what they're doing, mm-hmm. and and that's kind of the biggest thing I'm focused on for growth yeah. is making it a useful tool as a complement. This is why I like the word amplifier mm-hmm. as an amplifier what other people are doing. Mm-hmm. Yep. Absolutely. So that's, that's 2015. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Sounds fantastic. So uh, finally, how can our listeners find find out more about what you do and how can they connect with you online so that they can amplify your content? Oh, I, I, I love that question. Thank you. You see what I, I did there? Well, I, I know. Very well done. <laughs> <laughs> I heard the, I heard the word. <laughs> you know, I, it's interesting. I, I'm almost – if you type Mitchell Levy in Google, um, you'd get me. If you type Aha Amplify, any one of the tools, I make sure we're search engine optimized. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I, I think – uh, going to the probably the thing that would capture my attention most, right? So if you want to reach out to me, you know, you know, connect to me on on LinkedIn is probably one that I'll at least look at your profile and interact with you. Uh, feel free to connect to me on Facebook or Twitter. I'm happy to do that. But if you went to the Aha Amplifier and signed up, and you could sign up with username, and password, or with your your LinkedIn, Facebook, Google Google Plus um, accounts, and you either start sharing other people's content. I will, I will, because I listen, so I'll ultimately see that. Mm-hmm. Or decide that you want to create a couple aha books yourself. Or now, once you start doing that, start giving feedback, positive or negative. Mm-hmm. I, 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 negative feedback is not negative. Negative feedback is sort of a constructive way we can do things slightly better. Uh-huh. And and so I. In order to build relationships, I'm I'm always looking for somebody who says, you know, have you thought about using this tool in this way? Mm -hmm. So I am always looking for new partners who want you come to me with an interesting idea and say, hey, I'd love to take this tool and use it in this area. Have you thought about that? By the way, I could walk you in the door. Hey, new partnership. Mm -hmm. Right. So I'm very happy to power people to help 
be successful in different ways. And and I think that's the that's the way to reach out to me. So uh, mm-hmm. once again, LinkedIn um, or sign up for the AHA Amplifier. My email and content is mostly available. Mm-hmm. Um, it should be easily to reach out. And then when you when you have something you want to shape, please uh, please feel free to to reach out. I'm happy to. To, to talk and interact with, with those that are uh, from your program, from your audience. Wow, that is wonderful. Well, Mitchell, thank you so much for your time today. I know I learned a lot about thought leadership and i um, excited to, to make some things happen in 2015, so thank you. Uh, Rachel, very well done. I appreciate uh, appreciate being on the air with you. It's uh, It's been great, and I've appreciated uh, the things you do, and it made me think more about who you are and how, to, how I can help you. That's so fantastic. Happy. Thanks, Mitchell. Have a good day. Yeah, you too. Thanks, Bye-bye. Rachel. Many thanks again to Mitchell Levy for sharing his insights on thought leadership with us today. I know I learned a heck of a lot, and I hope you did too. Just to recap those websites, you can uh, get more information by going to Mitchell's website at MitchellLevy.com. That's L-E-V-Y. Or you can start using his free app that we talked about, the AHA Amplifier at AHA Amplifier, all on word, dot com. You can also watch a new thought leader each week on Mitchell's weekly Google Hangout series. And that you will find that at ThoughtLeaderLife.com. That's ThoughtLeaderLife, L-I-F-E, dot com. And I will also provide these links in the blog post for this episode. If you have any questions about my chat with Mitchell or if you want to join the conversation, I would love to hear from you. And I will provide that contact info at the end of the podcast. Now it's time for our content marketing tip of the week. For today's tip, now that we are on the subject of thought leadership, I want to talk about one of the most effective methods that I've found of growing your reputation as a thought leader. It is LinkedIn's publishing platform. Now, this is a platform that was once only available to LinkedIn influencers. So it was only available to people like Richard Branson and Bill Gates and the real uh, tippy top of the top of the heap uh, luminaries. But recently, LinkedIn has opened up this platform to all users. And I have to say, from my experience, I've been using it for a few months now. In fact, I look back, my first post was in July 2014. And really, all I've been doing is repurposing posts from my blog. So if you look at anything I publish on LinkedIn, you will see a little link at the top says this post originally appeared on the Resonance Content Marketing blog, and it will link to um, the original blog post. It takes about five minutes to set it up. And the results I have gotten from this simple practice have been absolutely overwhelming. I now have over 1,200 followers on LinkedIn. And if you're not familiar with following, if um, you are on LinkedIn and someone publishes a post on that platform and you like what that person has to say and want to keep up with them, you can follow them. And that means every time that person publishes a new post, you will it will pop up in your notifications. So just to give you a little example, I put up a post. It was actually over a weekend, which generally I find posting on the weekend on LinkedIn doesn't get a whole lot of a whole lot of traction. But this was a post. It was um, Betty White's birthday last week. So I decided to reshare a post we did a couple of years ago on what Betty White taught me about social media. And I just checked. It has gotten over 300 views, 48 likes, and eight comments. And I've gotten several people who have started following me since. I put up that post. Um, This works, folks. What can I say? It just freaking works. But I will say that LinkedIn publishing space is getting more and more crowded. I'm seeing a lot of people hop on and that content, um, it's it's starting to vary. You know, you're no longer necessarily seeing the best of the best. So before it gets way overcrowded, I think the time for you to hop on is right now. So if you haven't already done so, start publishing on LinkedIn, even if you're sharing uh, content that has already appeared somewhere else, but start publishing on LinkedIn and start growing your followership today. 
Okay, campers, that is it for me today. I hope you've enjoyed this episode of the Content Marketing Podcast. I want to extend a special thanks again to our interview guest, Mitchell Levy, and I hope you will check out his app, the theahaamplifier.com, and uh, play around with it, and uh, it's really, really cool, so check it out. If you like what you've heard today, please feel free to subscribe on iTunes or Stitcher or via our RSS feed, and if you really like what you've heard, please leave us a quick review on iTunes. I would would so appreciate it. For more information about content marketing, you're welcome to visit our website at resonancecontent.com, where you'll also find links to our pages on Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, and other social networks. I also want to invite you to check out our monthly webinar series. These occur every the last Wednesday of the month, which for January is next Wednesday. It will be January the 28th, and the topic will be B2B content marketing from the blog to the bottom line. It's going to be 60 minutes of terrific content that is focused on that B2B content marketing um, niche. So to register, go to resonancewebinar.com. And, uh, you know, if you can't be with us on the 28th, please go ahead and register anyway, because everyone who signs up will get a link to the replay afterwards. And I would love to have you join us. As always, I like to leave you with a quote. And today's comes from our interview guest, Mitchell Levy. He wrote, quote, if you're not a thought leader in your field, someone else will be. So step in and start becoming one today. Now, how's that for marching orders? Again, this is Rachel Parker with Resonance Content Marketing. Thank you again for listening, and we'll see you again next week. Take care.